Welcome back to the Star Wars News Net channel. Today, special episode, we're talking Star Wars Outlaws, and when we're talking video games in the Star Wars universe, there is no one else on the Star Wars News Net team that I would rather have to discuss this with than Jay. Jay is the guru himself, the video game expert here at Star Wars News Net, and the only person that we can bring on to have this conversation after... You know, there's been a lot of gameplay released in the last couple of weeks and different trailers for the show, a lot of information. So, Jay, are, how excited are you to talk some Star Wars video games today? Well, first off, I'm very flattered with that introduction. Um, video game guru. Wow, that's a really cool title. I love that. Um, that's what I'm looking for. I called Miguel the film guru on his episode, yeah. and he's like, hey, you just call me whatever you want because like, I, I don't do nicknames. So I'm going to come up with something. <laughs> I'm going to keep it like workshopping nicknames names for him until i get something maybe that he really doesn't like that he so he's like do not call me that <laughs> we'll see we'll see um no but yeah like I, i'm glad to be talking uh star wars outlaws today you know there was a lot of cool information that just came out about um the game mm -hmm. um for those who kind of aren't in the video game world to briefly explain like they just had the summer games fest which is like the big summer showcase for all of these mm -hmm. big companies xbox playstation um nintendo um will be doing their own showcase in a little bit but everyone is there and um the publisher ubisoft showed off some brand new gameplay um and some new trailers so there's a lot to dive into mm -hmm. um whether you're just a star wars fan whether you don't play video games at all or whether you're like me who makes um video game youtube shorts and you know videos up on right. the channel you know like this is really there's a lot to dive into here talking about good games dude the channel that jay <laughs> has and jay you weren't on the live show last week um a couple weeks ago but i did plugs you know good oh, games dude you. for you i stayed faithful to the cause and made sure <laughs> that people know if they want video game talk they go to you for it and no one I appreciate else that. okay so some gameplay dropped. I know we got like 10 minutes of kind of gameplay. There was a new trailer. Yes. They talked about different places we're going to go. So what are your immediate thoughts after seeing some extended gameplay released? My immediate thoughts were it was still very positive because not only did they show off new gameplay, but a lot of YouTubers and influencers and people in the gaming sphere got their actual hands on the game and played it for about an hour or so. Um, we have an article covered by Josh Atkins who did kind of summarize what the people who played the game felt okay. about it afterwards. And a lot of it was very positive. Mm -hmm. The one thing I gravitated towards um, in terms of their response was that there a lot of people were saying that in the way that Star Wars, the Star Wars Jedi games are they, they, they're not necessarily like great innovative games, but they're great Star Wars games. Mm -hmm. I kind of saw that and I was like, okay, that's really good to hear. Because okay. for those who, you know, like for those who have played Star Wars Jedi um, Survivor and, and Jedi Fallen Order, you know, right. those games are, they're, they're not like going to be winning game of the year. Mm -hmm. But for those who are like us who just want to experience like a great star wars story mm -hmm. with great combat and lightsaber action that's all we really wanted and you know for a lot of us like myself included jedi survivor was a fantastic game and you mm -hmm. know like so was fallen order so to hear that it, it's in that same vein where it's not exactly innovate like super innovative but it's something that will satisfy that star wars fantasy that makes me very happy to hear. So that's exciting to hear because I think the first thing that people want if you're buying a Star Wars game is you want to feel like it is Star Wars. And there's certain components, there's certain things you have to to meet in order to make that cross that threshold and, and get there. Because there's certainly uh, some Star Wars games out there that probably don't 
do that as well. And I agree yes. with you. Jedi Survivor, uh, Jedi Fallen Order are great examples of games that feel so Star Wars when you are playing them. And I did get the vibe from the trailer that I, that it's going to be something similar. Now, they did drop the like five locations that we're going to be able to go to in Star Wars Outlaws. So let me just kind of rack those off real quick. So we have Tatooine. No explanation needed there. Everyone knows Tatooine at this point. Uh, there was Tashara Moon, which is a brand new location in Star Wars canon, I believe. And it's yes. created just for this game. Seems yes. like it looks like a giant kind of Savannah Plains type area with some big cities intertwined. I don't know this for certain, but I wonder if this is going to be maybe one of the biggest locations. Because it seems like a very massive location. Yes. Um, yeah, so then, just to, um, yeah, go for go for it. Just to like explain a little bit about like Toshara, that is like the the new location that um, Massive Entertainment, the developers, created for the game, and it is you can definitely tell they spent a lot of time working on it because I think it is main, uh, meant to be like the big central hub of activity. Um, it's it, it, it's most likely going to be one of the first starting locations mm -hmm. um, that. Um, people will be exploring so i'm okay. really looking forward to it as well and like you, like savannah is a very great description because that's exactly like how they described it and also um they took inspiration from south african locations um or just yeah i believe like um kind of those like um sub sub-saharan uh, african locations okay. um, for that environment it looks really gorgeous so. yes it was definitely i love it when we get a mix of what we've already seen in star wars but yeah. also introducing something new it's nice to not always go to the same places it's like blending <laughs> the nostalgia of tatooine with hey here's a brand new location yes. in star wars and that's the beauty of star wars in a lot of respects is that you can continue to create these new locations as often as you want it's a truly you know expansive galaxy <laughs> and so another one was Kintonica, which I believe is what will later become Canto Bite. Is that, that is, correct. is that correct? Yes. Okay, so we have Canto Bite, basically. Uh, remember people, Last Jedi, where Finn and uh, Rose go in on their mission to find the Master Code Breaker. We have Kijimi, which, of course, uh, we've been to Kijimi before in Rise of Skywalker. And I think this will be interesting seeing it in a... Like a different timeline because yeah. apparently, and I looked this up, it, it's Kijimi's. I didn't know this. It started out as like a holy place, and then bandits yeah. started like kind of becoming really prominent and right. turned it, and ultimately it turned away from like a holy place to a place where like the new hive of scum and villainy just kind of took over. And so it seems like a perfect place for a outlaw, you know, to go. Kind of reminds me of Jetta a bit, mm. you know. I, I, I could see that. Yes, especially the Jetta we see at the end. But and I wonder if there will be still like maybe holy sects of people there, like yeah. monks or people who used to be a part of that in the game that you might have to interact with. And then the last location is Akiva, which I believe is that from the Aftermath trilogy. Yeah, I okay. believe so. Yes. Okay. So which of these locations are you most looking forward to like to get your hands on, to get inside that location and and play? I think for me the two that I really want to go to are the two from the sequel trilogy, Castle okay. Bites and Kijimi. Okay. Because for us so far, we haven't really seen a whole lot of those two locations. We saw them in the movies. But kind of very briefly, I'll talk a bit about um, I'll talk a bit about Cancel by first because I think that's a really interesting location because from if I remember correctly in the trailer that they reviewed last week, I believe Kay is actually from Cancel Bites, but she actually comes from like the workers districts. And so right there, you have this really interesting dichotomy again between like the working class. Mm -hmm. and the very rich in affluence, right? We saw a little bit of, of that in episode eight, of course, The Last Jedi. Right. But I think it will be really cool to see that from like the main character's perspective. And I think that is such a great motivation, right, for your scoundrel character. Of course, like anyone who grew up in 
a place like that, they're probably going to be a scoundrel. Mm -hmm. Um, kind of like Han Solo growing up on Corellia, and then yes. he's with the like the White Worms and uh, the yeah. with what's her name from the Worm Leader, Ma Lady Proxima, Lady Proxima, Proxima. Yes, and right. then but they're on Corellia, which is like the big you know industrial planet of yes. the Republic, making on these ships, and they're over here with the scoundrel life, and so sounds like Kate Vez is going to be kind of similar vein of, you know, growing up in these, like, you know, the slums and these, yeah. you know, really hard areas and yeah. working herself out of that and probably getting some, enacting some revenge on some of the rich snobs that might exist on Canto Bight. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and like you said, I mean, with all the rich snobs that exist there, that, that's just prime pickings for scoundrels. Mm -hmm. Like, I can't wait to see what kind of mustache twirling, you know, rich <laughs> Mr. Monopoly figures we're going to be stealing from. And we're going right. to be, you know, like taking and um, pulling off heists against. That'd mm -hmm. be like really cool. Um, but yeah, no, so, so that's uh, canceled vice. The second one location I just want to talk briefly about is Kijimi, mm -hmm. because, um, that's also a location for the Ashiga clan, which is another syndicate that um, the game will be focusing on. Okay. And the Ashiga clan is in like, is a I, I, I don't remember correctly, but I, if I, um, they might be like a new clan um, that's created for the game. Don't quote me on that. Okay. But you know, it, it, it's, it's definitely one that we haven't seen before. Right. You know, we know about the huts, we know about the pipes. Let's see you know, just how vast of a network of, you know, corrupt <laughs> um, drug dealers and um, gamblers there are. I want to see, like, how mm -hmm. just how many corrupt individuals exist in this universe. Also, I did look, oof. I did just check. It is, oh, yeah, yeah, they, okay. were, they were created specifically for perfect the, the, for the game. So there is no um, backstory. We don't know anything about them other than they're created for the game, which honestly is could be even more interesting yes. because you don't know what to expect when you yes. have the huts or crimson dawn or the pikes there's history uh that we can look at for how they might respond or yeah. what they're all about we don't yeah. know necessarily what the prime motivations are for the issue exactly yeah um they could be totally volatile you know they could be like more level-headed um the other thing i, I want to mention too about kajimi is like it's a snow planet and that's going to add, a, like, I love snow planets and, you know, yes. Star Wars. Hoth, obviously, being the big one. But that's going to be, you know, like, be so much fun to just... Because Tatooine is, you know, like a hot desert planet. Um, Toshara looks like to be more temperate, moderate. I wonder how the snow and the code is going to factor into the gameplay and how, like, the characters and the people there are going to adapt to that. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, we'll have to see. I'm excited to get a blend of new locations, places yeah. we, you know, it's like Tatooine has been explored so much, but you have to have it in there when you're doing a game like this. So yes. to have that, you know, paired with some of these other locations will be will be really nice. So this is a, you know, a truly open world game, but intuitive in the sense that our actions were going to have consequences and what you do, you know, your threat levels can rise. And so I thought what do you think is the right level of immersiveness for fans to get really invested? Because I can see some people like wanting to stick to a main thread. And if it's too much, you have to go on all these little side quests in order to really grow in the game. They might get a little, right. might bog them down a little bit, but I also, you know, there's going to be some people that all they want to do is the side quests and go do all the little <laughs> things and avoid the main story. So what do you think is the right level of just immersiveness for this open world for fans to, you know, really be enjoying their experience as a whole? Well, to answer that question, I think um, Julian Garrity, who is the director on the game, he commented on the game's length. He was asked, like, how long will the game take? And he responded with by saying, like, it's not going to be a big hundred plus hour epic where okay. there's going to be like endless side quests, endless stuff to do, you know, like big, huge maps. I believe he said it would be somewhere around the 
30 to 50 hour mark uh, okay. somewhere around there you know probably 50 hours for like those who want to you know um do all the side quests you know and for those who are like completionists they probably can't stretch it out to mm -hmm. the 100 hour mark but that right there is like to to me like the perfect um like amount of time. ground okay it's like a perfect blend. yes okay yeah so, i love that and i even like how your threat level is different for the different groups like yes your threat, like you can in your threat level with the hut and huts might increase to like seven or whatever i forget the scale yes. that they introduced yeah. but you could also by doing that you could decrease your level with the empire or the pikes or the yes. shiga clan whoever yeah. it is that you're maybe working for and so you have to like balance all of these different things so right I that was interesting and your actions have consequences so i want you to talk about those consequences for a moment like what you know, I'm a guy, we've talked about this before. You love the stealth component. Like you're going to have <laughs> to be stealthy. Stealth yeah. is not my action. I go in guns blazing if I play a video <laughs> game. And that's going to obviously be why the 30 to 50 hour mark is actually a 120 hour work for me because I'm going <laughs> to play stealth. But talk about the consequences of this game and what has you excited about what could happen as your threat levels rise with various groups. So... Something that they showed off in the trailers and the gameplay um, demonstration is, like you said, you there are choices to make as to who you want to side, how you want to perform certain missions. Like, for example, in one of the trailers they showed off, um, K is infiltrating a syndicate, um, their, their camp, and she's stealing something. She's being stealthy, but then she gets spotted. And then, um, you know, like the, the guard says to her something like, hey, don't complete the, the objective, work for us, and, you know, like, we'll pay you, don't, you know, something along those lines, right? Mm -hmm. You know, and then there comes up a little decision bar where, you know, do you want to actually go ahead and complete the mission or do you want to go ahead and do what she says? Um, when it comes to these decisions, what I'm most looking forward to is the how varied it could be and how varied the encounters could be and how varied mm -hmm. those consequences could be, you know, because the thing is, um, sometimes in a game you can make a decision and it just won't have any consequence. You know, right. it, it, it'll like you make a decision, like a decision will pop up on the screen and no matter what you decide, it'll still go in this one direction. That's mm -hmm. already plotted for you. I, I hope it's not going to be, too much like that in Star Wars Outlaws. I hope that, you know, like, of course, there are people who, like myself, who do want a canon storyline, who want one storyline that um, can be easily followed. But then I also want the chance to actually, when I play it through a second or a third time, to, instead of siding with the huts, I want to go ahead and try side with Crimson Dawn. And I want to mm. see, like, what that does. You know, give me different... Um, I would like, I would hope that by with these different decisions you know give us different um missions right give us missions where like hey if you're super loyal to the huts they'll send you um with a, on a mission to hunt down i don't know boba fett or something right mm -hmm. um if we're super loyal to crimson dawn have it to be where we're like a trusted advisor to kira Mm -hmm. So stuff like that would be really impactful. I think that would be really awesome. And so long as there's meaningful consequences and meaningful impact to what's happening in the game, mm -hmm. that would be like the way to go in terms of handling these decisions. And like you said, mm -hmm. you know, like you have like these rising threat levels. So like, it's going to be really cool. Like I think in, in the game when, if you really like anger the empire, like they said, they'll 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 send ATSTs at you. They'll send Tie Fighters at you. Um, they talked about like Death Troopers being one of yes. the maximum threat levels, like a squad of Death Troopers coming at yeah. you. And I'm curious to see, it, depending on if your threat level rises with different syndicates, do different syndicates have certain people they send after you right. uh, in order to punish you? I, that might be yeah. like a little bit of uh, wishful thinking, but I think about how in the book of Boba Fett, the Pikes send Cad Bane to do their oh, you know, dirty work. Yeah. And it seems like he's in league with the Pikes. So I'm wondering... Oh, if I, 
get on the Pike's bad side too much, could someone like a Cad Bane be sent after me in order to take me yeah. out? Or do the Pikes have a specific group that they send after you to take you out? Do the Huts have yeah. a specific group? I would like to there to be some level of like diversity in terms of each crime syndicate's yes. uh, you know, revenge plan versus it's like just a group of basic, you know modulated characters that look yes. kind of similar and it's like oh these are the pikes these are that you know what i mean yes I, I will like that too for sure so how intrigued are you let's talk about our main character k vest so how intrigued are you with k vest right now you mentioned before like her i think being from canto bites i yes. guess i didn't know that so that's interesting and how so how intrigued are you with her character and her little animal friends named Nyx, who apparently you can send to attack people in <laughs> the game? Um I think Kay and Nyx is an interesting dynamic because the more I thought about it, like I like I I, I like the little relationship they have. It's very cute, obviously, right? You know, they're like, like here's her pet cat or dog you know that that's going to help her on missions um and that can distract um your enemies or that can you know go and attack them my only thing is though that i felt like that we've seen that dynamic um especially in video games with cal and um bd mm -hmm. so as cool as it is I, I i'm a little bit disappointed because you know i would like something a little bit different you know like a little bit of a different dynamic mm -hmm. um especially since we have seen that dynamic in games very prominently mm -hmm. with um star wars um the Star Wars jedi games that being said you know like i think you know it could it could definitely lead to um some really cool um possibilities in the game and with combat like you said being able to attack enemies i but definitely for me, though, the, what I really want to kind of um, explore, too, is K. K is obviously the main character. And so, right. you know, like, the focus, of course, will be on K. But I'm really interested to see, like, how her, how she grows as a scoundrel. Because she's still in her youth and still trying to find her footing as a scoundrel. How bad is she, how bad of a character mm -hmm. is she going to be? You know, is she going to be ruthless or is she actually going to be like a caring and more kind-hearted individual well I, I like to think that depending on how you play the game that could turn right. out a little bit differently if depending on the level of scoundrel that you are are you double crossing everyone are you loyal <laughs> to certain people like i would like yeah. to think that depending on the choices you make could alter the you know outcome to some degree for your character and also i want to say this if there is a single syndicate or if the empire comes out and hurts my little best buddy dog that i'm taking <laughs> alongside me nicks like i'm i'm only exclusively doing missions that harm that group whatever it is <laughs> yeah. so if a death trooper shoots nicks and or he is harmed in any way all i'm doing is that threat level is going to rise so fast because i'm just taking the empire out as much as i can <laughs> um I will I will kill all of the Ashiga clan members if I have to, if it means retribution. I will go John Wick on the clan members <laughs> if my dog is hurt in the show. Uh, so there's going to be, speaking of conflict, there's going to be dog bites in this game. Uh, yes. They showed a little bit of some of the space battle action already. We've seen like little short clips of some larger scale battles that are going to take place. But the main gameplay that we've seen has been is smaller like fighter to fighter stuff that they showed recently so my question to you is how smooth do you think the space combat looks just from the little bit that you've seen so far and what are you hoping for in space combat as we get into this game so in terms of the dog fights uh for those who have um checked out the game and in some of the gameplay previews they've noted that it's so far, it's kind of more so just like serviceable. Um, mm -hmm. It's not like a completely like deep and immersive space flight simulator. Like, you know, there are plenty of other um, Star Wars flight um, space games out there. Mm -hmm. Star Wars Squadrons being the big one um, that came out a few years ago. So I think personally, like I would have liked it to be a little bit more 
deeper and a little bit more okay. um have a little bit more depth to it so far what they've shown off it seems to be a bit more like a star wars battle friends um type mm-hmm. experience That's, looks similar yeah 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 you know to where you have like a dodge button to where you can do a barrel roll or um mm-hmm. backflip behind you um i think so for for those who like me you know like i again would love like a bigger more deeper um space uh space experience like even just like ship customization did i'd you, like to be able did you play squadrons did you play squadrons the, i did i yeah i i didn't i bought it i did not play a lot of it just because sure. i don't do a lot of online gaming i usually yeah. just like playing by myself or do co-op like with someone in the room yeah and that was, game was basically made for that it, it felt like the idea was there it felt like they just it for whatever reason i don't i i, I fell off i'm not in the gaming sphere but it felt yeah. like there was certain things about that game that just didn't pull as many people in as they were hoping and creating yeah. what they were wanting but in terms yeah. of an immersive flight experience from like a basic immersive flight experience yeah it, it was better than any star wars game that i have ever played there just wasn't yes. enough like single like there weren't like any missions that i felt like i could go on myself what i would want to do i agree too and like you i played quite a bit of it but then it never really grabbed me like i wanted to because the single player experience Mm -hmm. was pretty mediocre um i think like i wanted like it was cool to interact with like Hera and with some of your um different squad mates but like you said like it it wasn't like a strong story thread that i was hoping mm-hmm. for it mostly served mostly served as just like a tutorial for you to go do the online part of it and the online exactly. stuff never really took off because i think yes it was just very limited too and like the type of missions that you could yes do or the, the type of battles but that in terms of the customization the way it looks like that is a oh cool. yeah i would love to get some of that in future star wars but yes the the gameplay for the the space battles does appear to be more of like your classic battlefront type yeah and you know again i think that's fine for what they're doing um because i think for the most part most people will be spending their time on the ground obviously right um but as far as like you know having that um scoundrel type fantasy the ship is obviously like a big part of of that Mm -hmm. so i'm a little bit Again, that, that that maybe if I get my hands on it and when when we actually play it, it'll be a little bit different. But I that's something that I was like, eh, maybe just a little bit more, you know. Like mm-hmm. I, it, um, that's definitely something that I hope um they can show off more later on. Right. If there is stuff to you know like in in space that hey, what you know what else can we do there? You know, mm-hmm. can we take on smuggling missions? Can we? you know like encounter are we going to encounter like big fleets of Mm -hmm. um the empire can we interact with like other ships like with the rebellion that would be that would really pique my interest a lot more Mm -hmm. um, for space stuff yeah we'll have to wait and see what maybe more gameplay that might get released from this so lando is in this game we've seen kira now in this game uh which of those two are you more excited for i Personally, of course, I will always stay on Lady Kira. So, <laughs> will always be on Lady Kira's side. As charming as Lando is, I have to go with. I am super excited to see Kira in this game. But which one of, of those two uh, are you more excited to interact with? It's so interesting that those two are in the game because when you look at the timeline, you know, it's set in between episodes five and six. And for both characters, you know, like for all of us who follow these characters you know like this is a really key moment for both characters Mm -hmm. because you know obviously lando you know he's he just betrayed um han and group and now han is in carbonite Mm -hmm. and later he's gonna go and join the rebellion and free han yeah so we're literally in the middle of like becoming a general in the rebellion at that point and then here we see Kira, who we haven't seen in live action since Solo, mm-hmm. um, but who's had a crazy arc in the comics um, and in the books. And here now she's one of the most prominent leaders and, you know, like, if not the prominent leader in Crimson Dawn. 
At this um, point, she, she is. Okay, okay. Thank you for clarifying that. Um, so, in, yeah, because the main comic run for the last comic run she has, which is um, like the Crimson Rain and all that kind of stuff, it takes place leading up to Return of the Jedi. Yeah, right, right, right. Okay. No, thank you for clearing that up because I couldn't remember exactly where she was. But, you know, obviously, like, Kira, another big fan favorite character. Um,. If I had to choose between the two, I'd probably go Lando. Cause okay, I I, 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 like you would. <laughs> I know you love Lando. We talked about Star Wars. Enough. Right. I know you love you have a, you love some Lando. Yeah, um, yeah. It, it, it's it's really cool. Dude. Like anytime he anytime he's on the screen, he always just chews it up. Mm-hmm. He always chews up the scenery, whether it be because of his crazy outfits or because of like his smooth talking. Mm-hmm. They did show off, and it's funny, like the little bit that they showed off of Lando is of him playing Sabacc with Kay. Yes. And I thought that was like, oh, that's perfect. Mm-hmm. You know, and if there's, I really hope like there's a, there's a mission where Lando and Kay are, you know, like you as Kay have to play against Lando and Sabacc. I'm telling you right now, that would be so fun, but I'm telling you right now, there's no my Crimson Dawn threat level is gonna be so low because I will <laughs> do whatever Kira asked me to do. She's like, I need you to go murder yeah. the leader of the rebellion. I don't care. I'm murdering the leader <laughs> of the rebellion. Hey, infiltrate the Imperial Palace and steal something from Palpatine. Okay, I'll die trying. You know, it's whatever. <laughs> um, what are your what are some characters that you hope to maybe be surprised by that might pop in and be a part of the show? Yeah, um, or the, the show, the game. The, um, you know, it's crazy because from everything they've shown off, it seems like there's almost like no limits. I think there there is a limit to some degree. You know, I think we're probably not going to get original, like the the core original trilogy characters. We're not. Mm-hmm. We're probably not going to get Luke and Leia. I kind of hope we don't. Right. They just you know, they I, don't fit the the vibe of yeah. Star Wars Outlaws. Like you definitely want characters that fit the the vibe of yeah. scoundrel, gangster, whatever. Right. And Han's so, obviously frozen right now. So Yeah, they 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 have shown Han and Frozen and Carbonite and Java's palettes, which is kind of cool. Um you know I I I I don't think that we're gonna get any lightsaber wielders. There's so many bounty hunters that they can choose from um and people that are just like you said scoundrels um Mm -hmm. (sighs) dangar would be a really cool inclusion um you know like if you if you think about like the bounty hunter room in episode five i was ig ig88 you got boba bosk i want to be cool to see all of the cad bane we know is around yes cad bane is around um but I think the big one for me, and again, this is just pure, like if, if I could have anyone um, show up, it would be Dr. Afro. Okay, that'd be cool. Yeah, because again, a beloved fan favorite character have, we haven't seen in outside actual, of yeah. outside of the comics. Yeah, exactly. Um, I mean, she's such a cool... I thought about Ochi at Bestoon might be an interesting character uh, mm. to have in there as well. Um, just another one to, for the sequel fans as well. <laughs> um, you're going to have to remind me. Who, who, who's that again? Ochi from R- Rise of Skywalker. The guy that they, the dagger, you know, Ochi. He's all bald, but like at this point in time, he doesn't look that way, I don't think, yet because he hasn't gone to Exegol with Vader um, quite yet. Okay. Um, okay okay but yes he's yeah like one of the lead assassins at this time in the comics kira actually hires him to kill he kills um palpatine's like imperial guard he kills all of them like with yeah this whole thing that's like what ends up getting palpatine's eyes on crimson dawn ultimately uh, okay when he now, starts yeah. investigating yes now i um... of bestoon literally the reason why ray is an orphan jay <laughs> kills her parents <laughs> It's coming back to me now. It's coming back to <laughs> it's me. It's all coming back to me. Yeah, I'll, <laughs> I'll send you a full uh, document of all yeah. of Ochi's references so, and appearances in Star Wars afterwards. I'm, so you can, I'm gonna, so you can um, quick. Yeah, I, I'm going to go and um, 
the refresh on the Wikipedia <laughs> right after this. But no, I think that uh, any one of those bounty hunters would be a great inclusion. Oh yeah, there's there's plenty of them that you can that you could drop in there. Uh, so let's talk about Indy Five though, the droid that will be. I guess he's kind of like your partner droid in a sense. Case like partner droid. He's a modified droid commando built by the Separatists in the Clone Wars. What are your What are your thoughts on ND Five? My thoughts. Well, first off, it's funny because like every like a lot of people on Twitter and on social media were like thirsting. Um, I for did write ND5. in my uh, I wrote in my notes here. Is he hot? Question. Mark. <laughs> is he hot? The jacket is a cool feature, though. Hey, you don't have to argue with me. <laughs> yeah no I, I i think um in all honesty i kind of wish he was like the main partner um accompanying k rather than nix um i view, I view nix as just like the little buddy i feel like yeah Indy is the main partner i don't know how long right. he's gonna be in the storyline though but like is he on the ship with her going places or he is he is you go back to no 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 he, he he's from from what I understand, and from what they've shown off, like he's a guy who's gonna be on your ship, and he's traveling with you, um, and he's like, he's sort of like your intel guy, who's probably gonna be like in your ear saying like, "Hey, so and so okay. is in this part of the town, you know, like go here." Oh, That's okay. kind of like the, the the role I've gathered from what they've shown off. He could have more of an involvement, but like. I kind of, I was kind of hoping like we would have like some of that, like Nathan Drake and Sully um, dynamic that like for for those who have played Uncharted, um, that kind of a dynamic where you know it's like this back and forth like almost like a buddy cop uh, okay. sort of relationship. But I do see like why you know like there there does need to be someone, you know, two point the character and the player in the right direction. So Andy Five kind of fulfills that role. You know, in all honesty, though, like, it's still funny to me that, like, the universe, there's still vestiges of the Clone Wars, even, like, this far deep into the timeline. Um, so, you know, like, I think, and ND5, you know, I think he's a really cool inclusion. Um, I just want to see more of him, and I really hope, like, he plays a more prominent role. Who knows? We'll we'll have to wait to see yes. on that part because I don't think we really got any bits of him in that gameplay that they really no did, as far yeah. As I, what does Star Wars Outlaws need to do to succeed? And I know that success is subjective to different people. Like I'm not asking you to tell me how much you know money do they need to make off this game, right. like how many copies need to be sold, but in your eyes uh and maybe that is what success is for you i you can paint this however you want i'm just curious in your eyes for us to look back a year from now and be like star wars outlaws was an extremely successful star wars game what does that mean for you for me i think the the big thing that star wars outlaws needs to do this might not apply to everyone because you know again like you said um Success is like, um, like this is going to be a game that's going to be, regardless of how it turns out or the reviews, um, I think this is just going to be a game that a lot of people are going to pick up and play. Mm-hmm. Uh, there, there's no, there's no um, way around it because um, this is on a lot of like the gaming websites have put this as one of people's most exci- like biggest games of the year. Okay. This is going to be like a very big thing for, you know, like Star Wars fans, for gamers. But I think for us to like look back and say like, okay, that's a good game. That was a successful like project. For me, I think it needs to have a good launch product without many glitches and without many bugs and without many performance issues that plagued star wars jedi survivor uh, star wars jedi survivor okay. i think like like the we, first you're saying that that first week that it's available yes trying because like every game's gonna have little glitches that come yes. up in the first week yes. but def, you want you know not any big setbacks that first week if they can make it through that first week unscathed then it's <laughs> like okay we're traject like the trajectory is going to be really high yeah but you're saying if you know, maybe we're having a you know a rough first week that due to 
a number of factors that could lead to some disaster. Yeah, the thing about because for, for for those who you know maybe like didn't play um, Star Jedi Survivor like in the first week or like the first week or two, it was a rough experience plagued by plenty of glitches where you know characters would just fall through the ground or like phase out, disappear. Um, performance issues where it was just um, like the the um, the characters would just like glitch out where like um, it would like the actions would be super stuttery. Um, so that's what like in the gaming world we talk about like um, um, frames per second. Um, so proper high frames per second would be like really smooth actions, you know. So like it would just be like. Um, from from here to here and just be really smooth, but when it's low frames, it'll be like really glitchy and really cut out. Where it's like, eh, eh, like like the actions okay. will be stuttering. That's what like um, we mean by like frames per second. And like, so Jedi if, Survivor had some issues with that. You're saying that if Star Wars Outlaws has a similar respect, and that makes sense yes, in that you know we're talking about an open world game. So yes, it's not like these actions are planned within the game always so yes you're trying to explore new areas and do different things than other people on their servers are doing and yeah. it's everyone's having those issues yeah and then suddenly you're yeah that could compound into a disaster the other thing too is because like well when it came to star wars jedi survivor especially for those playing on pc it felt like the game was fighting you like whenever you try like and, and that's a whenever that happens that can negatively impact a game and for hundreds and millions of people because you know like especially for those um who pre-ordered the game and one of the things that it's in, it, that that's for like the special editions for the deluxe editions for people who pay like an extra 30 and up to an extra 50 dollars more i believe mm -hmm. like they can get access to the game early and they can get access to the game before it even releases, like to the larger open public. If the game, if they find out that the game is running poorly and that it's buggy and that there are crashes, you know, people are uh, phasing through like objects or that the visuals aren't, mm -hmm. don't look great, that's gonna have a huge impact. And like that would, that, that would really tarnish. The reputation that Star Wars games have. It's already kind of bad because of Star Wars Jedi Survivor. If we have another experience like that, that see, doesn't look really good. That, see, I knew there were some issues with Survivor when it came out, yeah. but I thought that the response to Survivor as a whole was really positive. Is there is there still lingering talk of you know about how that game went because i thought it was more it was a the first week was difficult for people as they were yeah. trying to figure out because i and correct me if i'm wrong it was like the biggest star wars game ever in terms of yeah. the, the scale of what they yes. were trying to do within the game and so i thought though after the first few weeks that it got sorted out and people really came along to love the game yeah but is there still like lingering talk on in the gaming community about you know, I hope we don't get a, you know, this isn't another Jedi survivor. Yeah, no. Um, I think like we're at that point now where people do look, look back at Jedi survivor very fondly. I do too. Um, it's one of those things though, like where we now, like, I know like a lot in the gaming community, um, like the YouTubers skill up. Um, he's one that we included in our write up, uh, who had a, um, hands-on impression and even like some of the other people like that we included in our mm -hmm. posts online that they did talk about how the game was running because uh, you know like after star wars jedi survivor um that's kind of like that definitely is like one of the big talking points right now when it comes to star wars games which is really sad you know like because now what we you know like when it comes to like these big games we're like okay you know does it run okay, okay? um it's it's not that, you know, like, like you said, like Star Wars Jedi Survivor is a fantastic game. And people, I'm like, myself included, look mm -hmm. back at that game very positively. It, it got nominated for Game of the Year at the Game Awards. Okay. But I think that it's one of those things that, you know, like, if, it, if Star Wars Outlaws doesn't 
run very smoothly and if it is buggy and if it has plenty of visual glitches and if it, it's tough to play and it's like fighting you it i think like that might be where it's just like not again okay like and, and it might be like you know like a last straw sort of thing of like okay we can't trust star wars to release a solid okay. game on, on on opening day okay all right well that I guess does lead. It's going to be an interesting premiere then to see what yes plays and and how the game runs. What I don't, I'm not sure. What are the future Star Wars games that are being developed right now? I know there's talks they're going to create the third Jedi game. Yes. Right now, but is there anything else on the horizon right now? But outside of Outlaws, I think. I mean, obviously they don't launch these too much. I know that Eclipse is supposedly a thing whatever and then the knights of the old republic remake is yeah is that still even happening or is that been scrapped I, there's a lot of i think murkiness <laughs> around the next big game other than the third jedi game so star wars knights of the old republic remake is reportedly still in development it's crazy because um you know like it's been in development for years now mm -hmm. um from what I understand, um, the develop it switched from one developer to another, and it's now being worked on by Saber Interactive. Saber Interactive, who are now releasing actually one of the biggest Warhammer games coming out this year, okay. I believe. So they're they're currently the ones working on it. Um, as far as future Star Wars games being worked on, like you said, Star Wars Eclipse. That's another big one. That that's another one that was set, it's set in the High Republic. Um, so a lot of us here are like really excited for that. Um, they have, you know, they are a working lot of going on with how that game's being made, who it's being made by. Yeah, that's another. That. I'm not super familiar with all of that. That's a podcast for another day. Yeah, but okay. I just want. I was just trying to clarify what games you know are possibly in the works. So last question, and then we'll get out of here. Yeah, um, yeah. What what do you need to see a little bit more of to get you over the top excited for the game before it premieres? For me, I think that they've shown off a lot of gameplay so far, which is great. You know, I I it's good that they're showing you the players mm -hmm. what you're going to be experiencing in this world, what you're going to do like in the regular interactions. Mm -hmm. For me, I think I want to see a little bit more of the story and the writing. Because okay. that's that's what's going to be drawing people in, right? It's right. Um, people like realizing like, oh, you know, I can be a Han Solo type character and I, I can interact with all these other characters. Um, show us a little bit about the story. Show us a little bit more of the story. The one thing, you know, like even just thinking about it right now, like it's focused on a heist and you know like that's gonna be like the big mm -hmm. plot it's like it's gonna they're gonna go after this one huge score show us the score we don't even know who we're targeting and you know who um what the heist is is it money is it a big you know precious um ark of the covenant type uh, <laughs> you know treasure um that would be that, that that's the one thing that i think um I'd like to see more of. Okay. All right. So we're looking forward to Star Wars Outlaws yes. August 30th, right? August yes. 30th. Okay. Yes. So August 30th, um, we can pre order this already, right? Like we can get yes. pre ordered in. I'm sure they yeah. have different levels of the game to get early access or any like, expansion. Is it, what does that look like? So that's a, that that's another interesting co like topic worth discussing but you know we, we'll, we'll probably save it for like another like live show or something but um for those who are um looking or really want to get um like the full experience they do have a package where um i believe it's the deluxe um edition where if you pre-order that you get the full season pass which would be like um extra content that they'll release in the future as well as like a job by the hut mission which is okay. unfortunately locked behind a paywall you know like really? you need to get yeah that and, and again that's like a that big is... thing that oh wow yeah it's it, it's it's a it's a it, what's funny is that it's already like a mission that's already made but they're locking it behind that season pass oh, um man. so yeah i know right that there, there's a lot that that, that's another thing um, that, um, 
really alarmed a lot of us in the gaming mm. community. But um, yeah, so it's coming out August 30th. If you do get the deluxe the edition or the higher ultimate edition, you can play the game three days early. Okay. Um, so instead of August 30th, you can play it starting August 27th. Okay. For those who are like really, you know, like really looking forward to this game, really want to, you know, like get in on it early. Um, but yeah, no, that that's Star Wars Outlaws. Um, All right. Well, hopefully it comes. Exciting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Star yeah. Wars I'm... Outlaws, August thirtieth. Well, I'm sure we'll be talking about it more as we get more information sure. here. We'll be covering more on Star Wars Newsnet. Jay, thanks for coming by today. Uh, My pleasure. Talking Star Wars Outlaws. I just want to plug one more time uh, your YouTube channel for video games called Good Games Dude. You guys go subscribe to that. Follow Jay there. Like some of his videos. Uh, he does a really good job of doing a very like diverse set of discussions on video games. I know we have one about like what makes a great game. Like, is it the story? Is it the action? Uh, he he does a lot of gaming reviews. So go check that out uh, for more gaming insights. Again, always follow us here on Star Wars News Net for all of your updates on whatever is going on in the Star Wars universe. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Follow us wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, thanks for listening, watching, however you tuned in today. We will see you guys next time for Light and Life. And remember, we are all the Republic.